there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Oh, I am so glad to be here today, and I certainly am glad you are with us. And I always like to just give a shout out to those who've never seen the program before. You're so welcome. Name is Home Keepers, and we are interested in anything and everything that affects your home. And that is anything and everything, isn't it? So uh, just stay with us. We'll probably hit your topic one of these days, but we are so glad you're with us and to you faithful uh, viewers out there who've been with us for a long time. Uh, can't tell you how much we love you. I have a good friend back with me today, Dr. George Malcolmus. Let's hear it, guys. Yay. Yay. Uh, I'm going to show you his magazine, which is uh, bigger than Newsweek, by the way. And uh, I remember when I looked it up, he was, uh, hold on, I'll tell you. The first time he was here was January 22nd of 1999. And he's been here almost every year since. I think we missed a couple of years uh, with scheduling problems. But um, when he came, you know, he had this little magazine and a lot of people thought he was a little nutty. But I remember when he came in, I had a bad cold. And he, this fan club followed him in here, and I thought, well, who's this guy? And I'm telling you, we connected, and he is welcome here anytime. And I'm anxious to just give you an update on what the Lord has done with this amazing, amazing ministry that he has. And let me tell you, if you're sick, if there's something wrong with you, I want you to listen to what he has to say, okay? And we're honored to have Rhonda with us today. That's his wife. And uh, he told me the story once that he kind of got her all healthy and in shape before he married her, which is probably a great idea. So we're glad to have them. And uh, I'm going to make one of Rhonda's recipe. It's a raw corn salad. Now, Dr. Malcolmus believes in 15% of everything raw. I mean, 85% and 15% cooked. And it's all fruits, vegetables come out of the ground, nothing from animal products. So this is his basic premise, and we'll get into that in more detail. But before I join Wanda to make this salad, which I'm really anxious to uh, taste, I happen to like raw corn myself, I uh, want to offer you one of the first books that he ever, ever uh, published and wrote called Why Christians Get Sick. And this has more than 150 scriptures in it. If you're a Christian and you're sick, you need this book. And there's a lot of sick Christians out there, by the way. Uh, for that gift of at least $20 plus the shipping and handling, we'll get it out to you. I have read it. I couldn't uh, recommend it any more heartily than I do today because he's absolutely right on. So if you use your bank card, it's 1-800-229-0059. Call that number or write to us at Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, Three three seven five eight, and now I have joined Wanda over here. Isn't it nice to have Dr. <coughs> Malcolm is back? It is. <laughs> he's getting so famous, though. Do you no. think he'll always come to see us? I mean, he's. I think getting, so. He really likes he us. He is nice, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dr. Malcolm is. I just put that word right into he your will. mouth. <laughs> he will. Now, um, I don't know if he gave me a concession. Maybe we can talk about it. But this needs an ear of corn, and you cut it off, which I've done many times for soups and things. But you can't find an ear of corn right now as we make this is January. So um, I got, would it be ecclesiastical permission to use some frozen corn? It's you do what you have no, to do you when do, you have yeah. to do it. I guess. So that's what we're going to do. I will start the um, dressing, which really looks good. This is a third of a cup of honey. And this is a package of, sorry, Dr. Malcolmus. Frozen no, he corn. gave me permission. Oh, he did? He gave me permission. Oh, so he said frozen. ecclesiastical? That was okay. the ecclesiastical All right, well, now permission. I don't feel so bad. Scrape away, Wanda, <laughs> scrape away. So we're going to use this corn. That was a third of a cup of uh, lemon juice. And we are, this is obviously more than just, just one, one ear. ear. But we're just going to kind of wing it from this yeah. point. And this is wonderful, wonderful red pepper. This a is a, a tablespoon of oregano. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. Are you okay, darling? I am, you know, when you get a tickle. Third a cup just... of distilled water. Um, this is, uh, I think, a teaspoon of basil. Of course, you can't leave the garlic out. What was that, one clove? 
Excuse One me. garlic I clove. I think I need to get a drink. I'm going to cough myself. <laughs> okay. For whatever reason. All right, go ahead. We got the doctor in the house here. Maybe yeah. he can help you. And then uh, we've got uh, half a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. Dr. Malcolm, don't ask me if I have Celtic sea salt here. Okay. So these are things that you, when she tells you Celtic, and uh -huh. if, we, if you ask for the recipe, we will send it to you as it is as originally it is. written. Yeah. Okay, I like the color of this. The Isn't truth this is, I've never heard of Celtic sea salt. You haven't? No. Oh. I've heard of kosher. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this tomatoes. Yes, chopped tomatoes. That was some celery I put in here, and this is three tablespoons of parsley. Mm -hmm. And <clears> the <throat> color itself would make you want to eat it. You know what? I'm going to add this. I love is that, celery. Uh, celery. Yeah. Do you want yeah. more onions? Um. Probably not. There's quite a few in not. here. Probably not. I do looks want really it. good. Taste this. Wait, it's you, good need, thing to it's give, you need to put this in here, though. Okay, I just want a little taste. Mm. Cheating already. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, glad it's got the honey in there. Yeah. And I'm just going to stir this in here. As within, I think, all salads, I think once it sits and marinates a little bit, yeah. it makes it even better. I would suggest you probably put it in the fridge for a little bit. Yeah. But look how pretty the color is. Mm hmm. And. <clears throat> And it's got Dr. Malkmus good housekeeping seal of approval. Gorgeous. Yeah, so I, I do like the white corn better myself. Do you want, um, are you going to try this? Yeah. With everything? Yep. I have your plate right there. Just a little bite. Okay, so pretty. But I think, as we said, that this kind of thing is better if it sits a little bit. Yeah, and if you're going to serve out. this like with a meal, if you want to do something mm -hmm. like this for lunch, possibly you can mm -hmm. use like a really pretty bed of lettuce. That way you're getting more vegetables and your greens in there. You like it? That's very good. Yeah. Actually, it is. Actually, it is. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, you know, you get a little bit of a question, but I'm telling you, it's really good. Well, you've got it. You've got your uh, wonderful seasonings in there. That, mm -hmm. but you got to have that honey. I'm telling you that. Yeah. Hey, if you want this recipe, the information is coming up on your screen, and um, I'm anxious to sit down and talk to Dr. Malcolm. I said to have Rhonda this time. Mm. Uh, she really plays a big part in this ministry, and uh, so it'll be a good thing for you to get to meet her here. That's good. Mm. That's good. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. All right. Welcome back. And Rhonda, glad to have you on the program, too, because I know you're a big part of this ministry. Uh, but do you remember the first time you were here? Um, I don't know if I remember the first time, mm -hmm. but I remember being here many times. Well, uh, this little fan club followed you in, and, and I thought, what do we have here? And one was a lady who, who was, I mean, on the floor with multiple sclerosis. She could not walk or anything. She'd been a piano player, and um, I think wheelchair and all. And she followed your plan, and she walked in here. She talked about it. And so that really kind of got my attention. But any time you're on, and I know it only takes 60 seconds or so, tell us why this happened. Oh, well, Halley Acres actually had its beginning mm -hmm. in 1976 when uh, at the age of 42 I was told I had colon cancer. At that time I was pastoring a very successful church in upstate New York that had grown from just my family of six to 600 members in six years. I mean, we had That's a good. Christian school, we had grades K through 12, we had our own radio broadcast titled American East Christ. God's blessing was so abundant on that ministry, and right in the midst of the blessing, at age 42, I'm told I have colon cancer. And uh, not wanting to go the doctor out, my mother had gone before me for her cancer because of the horrible consequences. And did they do chemo on her? Yeah, they that? did. And at her death, I was convinced it wasn't the cancer that killed her, but the treatment. So because of mother's experience going the doctor route, I refused any treatment and turned to an evangelist in Texas by the name of Lester Olaf, who encouraged me to change what I ate from the standard American meat-based sugar dessert cooked food diet to the diet God gave Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he said, drink a lot of vegetable juices. I made the diet change overnight. Almost immediately, my rectal bleeding stopped. Within a year, my tumor had vanished. And um, that was 35 years ago. Did you begin to feel better right away as oh, far as energy? Oh, oh and yeah, yeah. But that was 35 years ago, and I'm only three years from my 80th birthday now. 
So yeah. it's, it's been an incredible journey. I haven't even had a cold since I made the diet change. You know, and as I mentioned at the top of the program, uh, this, uh, this is bigger than Newsweek, by the way. It's, <laughs> Newsweek has about three pages. Now. Um, <laughs> But when you were here, it was a little like a two-page thing that almost looked like it was done on a, <laughs> on a digital <laughs> machine or something. And I think that speaks, that speaks of progress. But also, you are building a health community. We're with, building a village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, called Hall the Villages of Hallelujah Acres. Going to have 600 residences, 190 condos, one, two, and three bedroom garden homes on quarter acre lots, uh, estate homes on half acre lots in a gated community. But the whole community not only is Christian, but it's geared to healthy living where you have support in living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I, I was teasing him before the show started if you'd have any, you know, nutrition cops out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, a Hershey bar just got on the Hallelujah Acres. <laughs> no, but what I do have, I have cameras in all fast food restaurants across America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, do you ever go in a restaurant? Uh, to use the potty. Is that it? <laughs> do, you, do you carry stuff in your car that you... Yeah, eat? We, we carry a refrigerator with us. And you have uh, restaurants... At your at Halley Acres, yeah. yes, we do have a, a cafe there. Now, uh, Ron, I understand that when he first was kind of noticing you, that you had a lot of health problems. Is that true? Absolutely, mm -hmm. that was true. I got hit by a train in 1981, and walked away by the grace of God with no broken bones. But the end result of all of that was arthritis in every joint in my body, mm -hmm. and truly. I went on the healthy diet to prove to George that it wouldn't work for me. <laughs> I guess I, I'm here to tell you it works. I don't have arthritis. I don't have any pain. I can do anything that I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was telling Dr. Malcolm, so I, I am a par partial follower of him. Um, the best news I've had in the last five years was that dark chocolate is good for you. <laughs> so, don't believe everything you read. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I do pretty good. I, I, I feel really good. My point is, when people make just the slightest effort, there's payoff. That's Whatever true. percentage they change their diet in the positive, they'll experience that degree of positiveness. But if they'll go 100%, mm -hmm. that's where we see the incredible results. Cancer's gone, diabetes gone, mm -hmm. arthritis gone. Um, we had a fella got on our diet in January of 08. By October of 08, 10 months later, he'd lost 206 pounds. Yeah, there's probably, when you go on this, there's, and I know there's different body types, different right. metabolism, I know all that, but probably there's no obesity, real obesity problem, anybody goes on this. No, Couldn't in fact, they? Rhonda personally has lost 105 pounds since she went on the diet. And so it's, it's the best weight loss program on planet Earth. But it, it's so easy because you don't restrict your, your, your intake you, you eat all you want. You just change what you eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's wonderful to just eat all you want to your fill and yet just see the pounds just start melting off. Now, um, <clears throat> just in, in a nutshell, this diet consists of absolutely no animal product. This diet consists of nothing that previously came from something that had a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 129. Yeah, that, that God's you remember that. God's original diet. Yeah. <laughs> and so why, uh, I, I could be satisfied really with um, loaded baked potatoes and all that. Right. Uh, but y you, your advice on the cooked is only 15%, right? Yeah, because our body is a living organism comprised of living cells designed by God to be nourished with living food. Every animal in the wild Carnivorous or vegetarian eats his food raw. Only man takes that which God provides in his living raw state, and before he puts it in his body, puts they it on the fire and, 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 and cooks the living daylights yeah, out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, we go back to God's original diet as close as we can go. Um, you were saved at a Billy Graham meeting, right? May 29th, 1957 over 50 years ago. And, and did you sense this call to the ministry right away? Uh, it wasn't long after that God called me to go to school, four years preparation, Bible college, and then I pastored for almost 20 years. Um, my best church, um, well, I think I already mentioned it, grew from six members to 606 years. But then God used this cancer, and really it was a blessing 
the Bible says all things work together for good and we don't exactly. understand it when we're mm -hmm. going through it. But um, if it hadn't been for my cancer, Halley Acres wouldn't be. Today we have millions of people on the Halley mm -hmm. diet. Tens of thousands have written to tell me they've recovered from over 170 different physical problems, even terminal metastasized stage four cancers. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting, the body self-healing, if we'll treat yeah. it the way God designed exactly. it to be treated. Tell them hi for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to put the website up on the screen and I really suggest you go read some of those testimonies. They're unending and they are, they concern just about anything that could possibly uh, be wrong with you. Now we're offering the book, Why Christians Get Sick. It is my belief that Christians should be the healthiest group, uh, handle their finances the best, they shouldn't have debt up to here and that their whole lifestyle should be that testimony. And um, yet we see so many similarities to the world. Now that information is on your screen, why Christians get sick. And he has supported that with 150 scriptures and more. So uh, tell them what they can expect to find in this book. Because I know it's one of your first, it's, how many did you say is in print? Uh, five books are in print. but. Um, what, what I have found is that the information that I provided, and I wrote this book over 20 years ago, yeah. is as up-to-date as tomorrow's newspaper, mm -hmm. which is really pretty exciting with all that I've learned mm -hmm. since then. But it goes back into the scriptures and shows how God created us and put us in a garden and told us what we would eat to properly nourish this physical body. And when we eat what God designed us to be nourished with or to feed our bodies with, we experience the ultimate health that God designed for us. But when we leave the garden and the garden foods, that's when the physical problems start to come in. I think it's significant too that he put that in the first chapter in the Bible. Right. Now Rhonda, when you, you mentioned that you um, thought you would prove him wrong because uh, I'm sure you had a lot of pain. I hurt everywhere. <laughs> if I, when I got up in the morning, my hands would be curled like this and I had to run hot water on them. There's not any swelling in your finger. None. I got a little bit of swelling in one None. finger. And um, so I didn't think it would ever go away. And I didn't think what I ate certainly wouldn't affect it because <laughs> uh, right? arthritis runs in my family. Um, so it was Did you a think challenge. he was a cook? <laughs> Oh, I, I told her I was a nut, but I told her I was screwed to the right bolt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was why I was confused, and I didn't think it could help. I, I wanted it to, but I'll never forget the day I woke up and I didn't hurt anywhere. I thought I'd died and gone how to heaven. Was, how long was that? I'd say about a month. No kidding. Mm. Did you go on it right away? The, oh, absolutely. The whole package? Yes, ma'am. I didn't have a juicer in the beginning, uh, so I didn't do the juicing immediately, mm -hmm. uh, but I did all the rest of it. And I went pretty much total raw. And it was really confusing because I had no clue what to fix for food <laughs> because there weren't any <clears throat> recipe books. I said to George, this is a wonderful idea. Where's the recipe book? He said, well, there isn't. Oh, mm -hmm. no, there aren't any. <clears throat> yeah, and, we, <laughs> and that recipe was excellent. I'm going to have some more of that for lunch later. Uh, now. I doubt if you got a lot of invitations to speak in churches when you first started doing this. <laughs> Knowing the ministries I do, they probably thought you were one real nut job. That's what I said, but I told them I was screwed to the right <laughs> one. <laughs> but um, no, I, I had difficulty getting into any church at that time. And uh, I received a lot of criticism, especially mm -hmm. from my preacher brethren. But um, as time went by and they saw the changes that were happening in the lives uh, and the health of the people that applied these principles, the criticism has uh, diminished considerably. You know, my point is that <clears throat> ministers are, are supposed to declare the whole counsel of God. And so they love, they just love uh, Third John, I think it is, <clears throat> I, you know, I wish above all else that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. And so they take that and apply it to money and run with it. And we've had them do it <clears throat> on Christian television. Well, if the plan for financial stability and prosperity is in the scripture, why wouldn't the plan for healthy living be there as well? And it is. He, they're, they're, 
Equal. Absolutely. Yeah, I, my problem was when I first learned about this from Brother Roloff was that I always just considered the Bible as strictly a spiritual book. And here he had given me a verse in Genesis that dealt with the physical. And, uh, Did as, that bother you? Well, it didn't bother me, but I wondered why I hadn't noticed it before. <laughs> right. And, and I, so I set about studying the scriptures to see if God said something else about the physical. And that's when I ran into 3 John, you know, where he wants us to be as well in our physical body as our spiritual soul. I ran into, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, he said that the curse causeless shall not come. The curse of sickness will not come without a cause. And I realized we're dealing with symptoms today, not with causes. And mm -hmm. um, drugs will never take away a problem. Right. But when we get rid of the cause, the physical problems just disappear. It's, it's so beautiful when you understand it. I, I've had a doctor, uh, John Young, on here who is a medical doctor, worked in the emergency room for years and did, I think, some missionary medical work in Africa. <laughs> he said he got upset because the witch doctor had more success than he did. <laughs> Reason being, the witch doctor's probably giving him roots and stuff out right. the ground and he's giving him pharmaceuticals. And, uh, there's just uh, there's just so much truth to that that I think most of us believe I've proven it in my own life that when you follow God's financial plan it works I'm not wealthy but I've got a home and I got a car and and <clears throat> got a couple of dollars in the bank and all and, and he tells you how to do that mm -hmm. That's right. Why wouldn't it apply to this? Well, it does, but Christians don't realize it does. And it's so exciting when you finally realize, hey, God's got a plan not only for my spiritual soul, but for my finances and also for my physical body. Mm -hmm. Really, the, the things that really matter. Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. Now, who are Dr. Kerry Reams and Dr. Ann Wigmore? Well, Dr. Kerry Reams was a gentleman that was into nutrition many, many years ago. And I learned a lot from him. Dr. Ann Wigmore um, was into wheatgrass. Uh, maybe you've heard mm -hmm. of wheatgrass. Uh, I went to her um, home up there in Boston in an old brownstone, and she had turned her house into a garden. I mean, on all the windowsills throughout her house, she was growing wheatgrass and um, sprouts and so forth. And it was the only home I've ever been in that didn't have a kitchen. No, it didn't have a stove in the kitchen. Uh, I, I mean, a stove, a stove in the kitchen. A stove in the kitchen. Boy, she was committed. I mean, she was 100% raw. And now, isn't that where the barley green comes from, the wheat grass? Well, the wheat grass was the beginning of uh, what we have now, our barley mac. She, so she was kind of the originator oh, of the she idea. Was, and she was there 30-plus uh, years ago. Yeah. And this, um, how soon after you started the carrot juice and stuff did, did the barley green come along? Um, let's see. I, I guess that was when I went to Dr. Ann Wigmore's. And uh, I started growing um, the wheatgrass in cafeteria trays. And, uh, so is that, are those the two staples? Well, we, we, we have done, we grow the, the barley now in, in the field um, in, in an old volcanic lake by the, the 5,000 foot elevation in the Rocky Mountains. And then we harvest it, run it through a juicing machine, get the fiber out. And uh, then we reduce it from a liquid form to a powder form not by spray drying like most products, but by dehydration at a temperature of 98 degrees. So we keep the life force, the enzymatic activity in that powder. So when we put it into our mouth or into some water mm -hmm. and reconstitute it, it's just like making a fresh glass of the barley, barley juice. Uh, have you ever uh, calculated uh, the calories daily that you take in? My calorie intake is way below. Um, Guess. <laughs> uh, maybe 1,500. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and yet I work out. I mean, my, I, ha I have rock hard abs. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've, uh, I'm strong. Um, I'm healthy. My mind is still at almost 80 years of age, um, better than it was as a teenager. And uh, my endurance, I mean, it's just incredible. I'll do a three hour seminar with more energy than, <laughs> than mm -hmm. you can imagine. And even our grandchildren can't keep up with you when they <laughs> go out to play. I think the interesting thing too is that your son married someone with a degree in nutrition and 
you had a few rounds. Uh, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, until she got converted. <laughs> I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it really is. So what did she say about her um, <clears throat> education? Well, she realized she'd learned a lot of false information. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem in our universities today. Because she's out today. teaching this now, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I mentioned that, uh, please go on <clears throat> the website, read those testimonies. You know, every time you come, I, I'm more amazed mm -hmm. and uh, more impressed with, uh, with what's going on. But um, when you look at it, we've only got just a a little bit of time left. But when you look at our nation, and we have a real, absolute obesity problem. Yeah. I mean, we're in trouble. Almost when 70 percent you, of our population is overweight. When you look at Asia and places like that, we're, we're declining. We're declining educationally. We're declining um, in our health. And the health, cost of health care is going to bankrupt us. Yeah. And so. What I see when I look upon our nation um, is horrifying, but I see it in the church. The church yeah, oh, is just yeah. as sick as the rest of the non-Christian <clears throat> people. And our prayer requests in our churches, yeah. my friends, are, are over 90% for sickness. Mm -hmm. And we can eliminate almost every prayer request for sickness if people would just go back to God's original diet. Yeah. I hope you'll order that book. I don't know if we have time to get that information on the screen again, Why Christians Get Sick. If there's any group in society at all that ought to be the healthiest and, and, <clears throat> and have their life in order, it would be Christians. I hope you'll get it. I'm so sorry we've run out of time, but uh, hopefully uh, Dr. Malkmus will be back again next year. And it's certainly a tradition that we want to keep up here on Homekeepers because you cannot doubt the validity of this message. If you want to sit and say, I could never do that and all that. Uh, that's one thing, but uh, you can't doubt the validity of it. And I'm pleased to bring, bring him to you each year. Join me next time. Remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.